We are certainly getting close. Nine days left until the votes start getting counted on election night. This morning, we focused the entire program on arguably the hottest contested race in this area. That's for Iowa's first congressional district seat between incumbent Marinette Miller Meeks, a Republican, and Democrat Christina Bohannon. Just follow the money in this race, and you can see both the Democratic and Republican parties consider this seat very much in play. Here's how much each campaign spent so far this election cycle through September 30th. Bohannon spent almost $4 million, left her with about $1.3 million in cash on hand at that point. Miller Meeks laid out about $2.5 million on her re-election bid with more than $2 million left in her account in the campaign at the end of September. Now, there's very little polling on this race. One posted on the political tracking website, 538.com, taken from September 30th to October 1st, has Bohannon leading Miller Meeks 50 to 46 percent. However, this was conducted by the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee's targeting and analytics department. Take that as you will. I spoke with both candidates this week about these final days of the campaign. I asked both of them the same questions regarding some of the important issues facing the country and started with the divisive issue of immigration. What policies for true immigration reform do you support? Where are you willing to make compromise concessions with the other party to get a deal done on this? Yeah, well, thanks, Jim. Uh, listen, it is so important that we secure our border. And uh, I have you know, stood up to my own party and said that I thought President Biden was too slow uh, to take action on the border. Uh, but let's be honest, you know, Congress uh, bears the brunt of the responsibility on immigration and both parties have failed over the past few years to take action while they still talk about the need to do it. Uh, Representative Miller Meeks uh, and her party had a, a golden opportunity to pass the strictest border security bill that this country has ever seen. It was negotiated by very conservative Senate Republicans. It had the votes to pass, uh, but Representative Miller Meeks and her party killed it uh, in the House. They wouldn't even bring it to a vote. Uh, this was the bill that everyone knew had the votes to pass. Uh, it was the bill that Border Patrol agents said they needed to do their job and secure the border. It was the bill that our own Republican Senator Joni Ernst said was the best opportunity we would have in our lifetimes to secure the border. But Representative Miller Meeks refused to do it. Uh, they refused to either bring it to a vote. So, you know, they've lost a lot of credibility on this issue. I will vote to secure the border and I will never play political games with our national security. Is the border wall a concession you're willing to make? Yeah, look, we got to secure the border. So whether that's by wall, by technological measures, whatever it is, uh, I will work with the other party to get this done and stand up to my own party, as I have shown I, I, I will do. Representative Miller Meeks has never been willing to do that. She will not stand up to her own party to secure the border or on a variety of other issues. I have proven that I will do that and I will get things done for Iowans. The House has already passed an immigration bill, H.R. 2. But that wasn't a compromise. Um, and so I think that is certainly a bill that could in the Senate uh, with a Democrat Senate could have amended that bill altered that bill sent it back to the House uh, that did not occur uh, having said that I have several legal immigration bills already that I've been trying to pass so one the Afghan Adjustment Act for our Afghan interpreters people that were coming over after the botched disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan uh, still trying to get that across That's a bipartisan bill I have another bill America's Children's Act which is uh, children who are here legally on their parents visas often since infancy uh, they come here because our State Department is so inefficient uh, these individuals when they get close to 21 have to apply for their own visa and because we don't get them legal status we deport them and we've had uh, one that's threatening to be deported now and one that's already been deported in our district that's from uh, Belgium so going back to a family that he's unaware what about the pathway to citizenship that we hear the Democrats want so much that don't always seem to work well with Republicans you know I think first and foremost you have to see what it is that they're proposing uh, but I think before any pathway to citizenship other than the legal immigration fixes I've already talked about and having the waste of the State Department not waste green cards which is what they've been doing we have to secure the border so we need to secure our southern border. We need to put the technology that is there. We need to, uh, you know, put the cartel back on their hills because they're controlling the southern border. If you've been there, and I've been there four times, you'd know that. And I'm from Texas originally, although I've been in Iowa 
almost 40 years. I'm from Texas originally. It has never been the way it is right now, um, especially uh, those states that are there at the border. But every state's a border state, whether it's fentanyl, whether it's drugs, uh, whether it is people in the terrorist watch list, whether it is the sex trafficking, human trafficking, child labor, all of those things currently exist in the current system, which is inhumane and not compassionate. What steps do you support taking in Congress to address the fentanyl crisis specifically? Yeah, I, that's a great question. You know, we've got to stop the flow of fentanyl in the country. And and look, you know, what we just talked about, securing the border is a huge part of that. And the border bill that I just described had measures in it to detect fentanyl and stop it from coming into our country. It's one of the reasons why Border Patrol agents uh, supported that bill and endorsed it and said that they needed it because it had those resources in there to stop fentanyl at the border. And as I said, Representative Miller Meeks and her party in the House just killed it. Uh, and it's unacceptable. Uh, they're playing politics with people's lives, and I will never do that in Congress. I will work both sides to get, with, work with both sides to get this done. So some of those steps we've already taken, uh, some of them were taken in previous Congresses with uh, the opioid bills, uh, but one, we have to secure the southern border. Uh, I can tell you when I talk to the Customs and Border Protection agents, they will tell you that they'll bring in a large group of people into one part of the border and then they're running drugs in the part of the border which is not being secured because they're helping to process people through the southern border. So we need to secure that southern border. We need to give Customs and Border Protection uh, what they need. I've got a bill uh, with Senator Ernst on canine units at the border which are um, very good at detecting drugs if they're coming through the port of entries but if you secure the border and complete the fence and the technology increase our custom customs and border protection agents that will help the other things we've done is to react to when people overdose on fentanyl so what we've done on Narcan and naloxone we've also had to put forth bills to protect agents and our law enforcement here in Iowa so um, you can have just a, a touch or dust of fentanyl off of something else, off of a bag or in a vehicle, and an office that can be absorbed through an officer's skin and can kill them because they're not, they don't have the same tolerance for fentanyl or other drugs, so it's a highly deadly drug. We're also working on Snapchat and other ways that drugs are now trafficked through through the internet, and especially in young people. Uh, so we have a variety of bills that we're doing on that. Also support for our law enforcement and giving them the tools that they need. That's another reason why qualified immunity is so important. And my opponent unfortunately voted against our support uh, in the state of Iowa for supporting law enforcement, backing the blue, and for qualified immunity. Another very divisive issue is abortion. We know the ramifications of the Dobbs decision. Why do you think women should or should not have control over this decision, regardless of where they live in the country? This is a, such an important issue for, for women. Um, you know, this really is about fundamental control over one's own body, one's health care decisions, one's family. Uh, and so, look, you know, uh, Representative Miller Meeks has been so extreme on this issue. Iowa now has one of the strictest abortion bans in the country. It bans abortion uh, before most women even know that they are pregnant. Uh, Representative Miller Meeks advocated that bill, touted it, championed it when she ran for the Iowa Senate. Uh, in the Iowa Senate, she uh, actually voted to completely eliminate the right to abortion under Iowa's Constitution altogether. And then when she went to Congress, she continued this crusade there and actually co-sponsored a life at conception bill, that's what it's called, a life at conception bill that ban, bans all abortions across the entire country with no exceptions at all. Not for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. Uh, and uh, that is just a very extreme bill. It is very much out of touch uh, with Iowans and Americans on this issue. And, um, and it's terrible for Iowa women. I mean, it puts women in very difficult circumstances. You know, and what we have here is that Representative Miller Meeks is inserting politicians in the most private aspects of our lives. Uh, they do not belong there. Women should be able to make these decisions for themselves. The politicians need to stay out of our homes and our, our doctor's offices. So the Dobbs decision just returned that decision we know back that. to the I state. Don't, so I don't want to, we, and, people don't understand that part. Uh, in returning it back to the state, uh, people within that state, including women, now have the ability to determine what policy they want within their state. Uh, and it may be different in different states. They so don't have that I, ability in Iowa. They, they have the 
Uh, they do have the ability in Iowa. It restricted abortion to six weeks uh, with exceptions for rape, uh, incest, and life of the mother. Uh, so that's Iowa's law. There may be different laws in different states, but that's where it came from. And the divisive issue uh, through Roe v. Wade was that it took the decision away from people and away from people closest to their elected officials. Uh, I'm pro-life with exceptions for rape, incest, and uh, the mother's life. I've also passed bills in the state senate in Iowa in 2019 for oral contraception over the counter. I've introduced the same bills uh, in the senate because I think the best pro-life measure we have is to, and the best way to prevent abortion is to prevent pregnancy to begin with. I've also introduced bills I, um, on a uh, bipartisan uh, paid working leave group to support women and families. I am on a, um, a bill to extend the child tax credit during pregnancy, also on bills to support abortion. And most importantly, women don't only care about abortion. Women care about being able to put food on the we're table. Only they uh, care, we're getting they off topic now, though. Get, I don't want, I yes, understand, but we're talking about abortion specifically. I understand that there's other issues, and we're getting to some of these other issues. But specifically with abortion, the question really is, but why should it matter where you live in this country whether or not a woman has the right to make this decision? Why does it matter where you live? Well, are you asking for there to be a federal abortion ban? I'm not asking anything. I'm asking why it should or should not. Because it should return to the people in that district. There are things we can agree on and come to consensus. So. I think that the majority of Americans and Iowans feel that there should not be federal funding of abortion. I think that's a place where we have consensus. The majority of people feel that there should not be abortion up until the time of birth, but that's the Democrats' policy. They passed that in nine states and the District in Columbia, and all the Democrats in the House, except for one, voted for abortion up until the time of birth. But I think the majority of Americans don't agree with that and would reach consensus on that. We can also reach consensus that women should have access and easy affordability or easy and affordability of contraception so they can prevent pregnancy. And I'm going to continue to work on those areas where we have consensus. We've got more from the candidates coming up. What they think can be done about the national debt in Congress for the record.